I think the biggest adjustment I'm going to have to make once lockdown is over is getting back into the habit of wearing pants and shoes. You'll be very pleased to know that I am wearing pants today. And if you're, <clears throat> if you're up to it, if you, you can put in the chat if you want, hit a one if you're not wearing pants, uh, because that's kind of the lockdown uniform, but that notwithstanding. So I have been talking about the new normal. And I have to say now, that's, that's a very common phrase now, but I've been talking about the new normal since long before it was cool. But the interesting thing about it is, for the last 18 months, I have started every presentation with the statement that we live in the healthiest, safest, and most prosperous time in human history. And up until three months ago, that was very, very true. But now what? All the futurists, everybody who spoke about where we are and where we're going, has suddenly been derailed. This thing has come out of nowhere and changed everything. <clears throat> and amidst all the confusion and uncertainty, there are three certainties. One, whatever comes after this will be different. How different? We have no idea. Will it be 10% different, 100% different, 50% different? We don't know, but it will be different. The second certainty is that humanity as a whole will survive. We've survived worse, and we will certainly survive this. And thirdly, technology is going to play a massive role in facilitating whatever that different future looks like. And right now, we're all just taking it a day at a time. Uh, you know, as, as Pierre suggested, we're in this liminal state, and a day at a time, we're looking to figure it out. All our fancy big strategies at our Bosporats and getaways have all been derailed. So. This is my offering in that uncertain future. This, for me, is the greatest picture ever taken. And I don't know how well you can see it there, but in the very center of this picture, you see a tiny little blue dot. In 1976, two space probes were launched to go and explore the outer planets. And Voyager 1 and Voyager 2 traveled into outer space. And Voyager 1, after traveling for 13 years and 6 billion kilometers, on Valentine's Day in 1990, turned around and took this photograph. This is a photograph of Earth from six billion kilometers away. And why I love this picture so much is it encapsulates the human urge, desire, and drive to understand the world around us, to understand once we've understood something, we want to understand the next thing and the next thing. And this was our effort to now understand the universe around us. So that human spirit is what is going to get us through this and take us forward past a time of complete uncertainty. So the other element that I have spoken about is how we've seen transformation in our lifetimes. We have seen the world change repeatedly during our lifetimes. And the message has always been, there is more transformation going on right now than we've ever had before. <clears throat> The world we live in is completely different to the world your parents grew up in and certainly your grandparents grew up in. And we just see amazing things going on around us all the time. But suddenly, that, you know, if we look about how much we were transforming three months ago, suddenly that's too slow. Suddenly that's just not enough because now we've moved into hyper transformation where we're now in a space where everything we wanted to try or were, you know, speakers, you, every conference you went to, speakers were telling you, you know, we've got to innovate, we've got to do things differently. You've got to reshape yourself. You've got to remodel what's going on. And all the ideas and thoughts you had or that we felt were too risky to try or we weren't sure how we were going to go about it, suddenly it's being forced on us. And I guess the only consolation in all of this is that it's not like you personally are being targeted. It's not like the universe hates you in particular and is presenting you with a challenge or your business with a challenge. It's present the universe hates all of us right now. And so in that, we can find a little bit of a sense of community at least and go, how do we rebuild together? And hopefully, how do we make something better? And maybe it is a time to remake ourselves. We have the opportunity with all the with so much of what preoccupied us and concerned us being stripped away, how do we remake ourselves? And, and I think that statement also referred to by Pierre that, you know, don't waste a good crisis. 
it would be a waste if we didn't take the opportunity to rethink and to remake ourselves. Uh, you know, if we think about us as speakers, you know, this very idea of doing online showcases, online events, five years ago, every speaker would have said that's an atrocious idea because it was seen as a threat to us. And speakers are used to being experts. We stand up and tell you what you should do and how we go about it and how the world's leaders are operating in the world. And suddenly we're in a space where we don't know. That's very uncomfortable for us. So we're saying, okay, what we do know is that because humanity will survive, there is going to be a need to communicate important messages. How do we do it? So now we're trying this sort of thing. You're trying this sort of thing. When is conferencing coming back? How will it come back? How do we use these new ideas? So these, this is a time to try and remake ourselves. And the one thing we know, at least for the next two years, but once we're used to it, it's going to become the norm is remote everything, not just working from home or being able to do things remotely, but everything, you know, from conferencing to entertainment to the very way we interact with the world. We know that it is going to be remote. Um, and, 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 and certainly for the immediate future, because now we're, yeah, we're going to sort of cautiously and tentatively reintegrate with this world in this phased approach and reintegration with, uh, you know, post, post lockdown. So we are living through a time of prolonged transition. And the transformation we're going through right now, despite the hyper-transformation we see immediately in the more medium long-term, we are going to go for at least another generation, this transition of, of, of business, of our personal space and more. But we cannot forget that this is a human story. And, and, and what the current crisis, this pandemic has showed us is that more than ever, it is a human story. Prior to this, the big word in business has always been digital transformation. And what that has brought is an obsession with technology. And let's bring in technology and technology and technology. And of course, technology is one of those three certainties. But the story of technology is a human story. And we can never forget that. And we need to harness and understand that. And Conrad alluded to that. Peer is very firmly in that space. This is about us. It's about people. And if we don't come out of this with a more culture, people-centered idea of the world, we will have missed a massive opportunity. Because when we talk about transformation, and specifically digital transformation, we're talking about three things. Of course, technology. If you think about how we use technology, it's a tool. It facilitates things. It makes things easier, more convenient, and it should be better. And we're using technology to transform our processes. And, <clears throat> and, and, and this is a great time to completely strip away and remake our processes because the effort often is how do we take technology and do what we've always done? Well, now, how do we take technology and do something completely new, completely different, that perhaps we've overlooked before, or didn't have the opportunity to do before. But the big missing link in transformation has always been culture. This is the third leg of that transformation. And any effort toward transformation fails because we fail on culture. We don't understand people, how they will use technology, why they need it, and how we can make it better for our employees, our customers, the people around us. So this is the essence of what we should be thinking about and moving toward as we take baby steps back into the real world. And it is worth doing because, you know, we, more than ever, the world needs something better. It needs better businesses. It needs culture focused businesses. It needs, it needs us to be the best we can possibly be. And, and it is very difficult in a time of uncertainty. And no one alive has faced as much uncertainty as we're facing right now. But there are amazing things to be done. And if we see how technology is going to come to the fore to help us uh, navigate through this, I mean, already we're using it right now with the ability to continue our work, to continue engaging with each other. And you know, conferencing is absolutely going to come back. And it's going to come back because as we're seeing now with, with these sorts of efforts, we have an ongoing need to connect with each other, to share important ideas, to engage and interact with people in our own industries that we can 
uh, that we are gregarious animals. We want to be with other people. So there is a need for that. That is, that is not going to go away. But how we connect, the, me the mechanisms we use are going to improve. And you guys are learning as we are learning along the way. And we're putting these sort of things together to try and figure it out and figure it out together. And it is worth doing because more now than ever, there has never been a greater time to do great things. And that should be our next normal. That should be the next normal, the new normal. And that is me. Thank you very much.